Ooh, look at my nails in this palette. They look good with the green. Hello, hi, this is Madison from The Girl and the Lamb, and I'm here with my first ever vlog. I hope you're excited. I'm really excited. I had so much fun editing this, and normally I kind of don't like the editing process. It's my least favorite part, but this one was a lot of fun just because all the clips were really nice to piece together, and I get to just show you a little bit of what my spring looked like and what I've been doing with my life over the past three months. So I hope you're excited to see those projects, see what I've been working on, and just, you know, be there with me. Um, I'm going to be back at the end of the video, so grab a snack, grab something to drink, and let's get started. This weekend I am in Michigan for a little weekend getaway just to get out of the city, staying at an Airbnb. And today I'm walking around, it's around 50 degrees and sunny. It's kind of warm, a little cold and windy. And right now I'm sitting out on the Kalamazoo River, just drawing in my sketchbook. I've got some Tombow markers with me, I've got a few colored pencils. I've got some Ecoline markers, which I've never used these before today and they're just so gorgeous. I absolutely love them. Um, I was sitting out on a dock for a while and a swan came out of its nest in the reeds and swam around me for a bit and it's just been a really beautiful day. So if you have a chance to go out and draw somewhere on location, totally would recommend it this spring. And yeah, maybe I'll give you a peek into my sketchbook a little bit later. So I've never really used a travel kit before. This is kind of my first time. So I thought while I'm still outside, it would be nice for me to just show you what I brought today. Um, after drying for a couple hours, I realized I don't quite have the colors that I wanted to have for today, but the materials are pretty spot on. Um, I was planning to bring three colors of gouache and a jar for water, but I actually left those at my Airbnb on accident. So I just have this pencil case. It's super cute, it's a school bus. Um, my color palette was just a little too bright, I think, for this uh, day. Like, it's still pretty early spring. Things are still kind of dull. And that doesn't mean my drawings have to be dull, but it does mean that I couldn't quite, I needed more um, primary colors. I didn't quite bring them. Okay, let's show you so I mean the colors are beautiful together and I do like them it's just a little bit it's not quite perfect for this landscape which you know like I said I haven't done that much travel sketching travel drawing so I'm okay with it and it turned out okay um, my favorite drawing I did today is this one it's of the dock that I'm laying on I'm not laying on it now I was laying on it when I was drawing. I think this turned out nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. This has been a nice day. I'm a little cold. Sorry if it's windy, but I feel really at peace having made these drawings and like they were just 100% no pressure drawings, but they were full of color and that's a new combination for me. No pressure plus using materials besides a pencil. So yeah, I think I'm going to go home and get a little bit warm because it's chilly. And I'll see you later.
I am painting today and I haven't recorded any painting for this vlog yet actually which is kind of funny since almost all my other YouTube videos are painting videos so I'm just gonna show you what I'm painting today I drew this um, piece to kind of work on my children's illustration portfolio and just like work on those skills and I drew it like at least a month ago I've got to say and it's just been sitting on my desk waiting for me to paint it and I think I the longer I left it sit just the more intimidated intimidating it felt um, so I left it uh, but today I am finally working on it I may be like halfway less than halfway done right now but it's kind of a marathon painting it's like big it's the size of like a, a double page picture book spread and it is just I don't know I'm checking a lot but I like how it's going and you know I think maybe you can just watch me do a little bit of progress on it I don't think I'm gonna finish it because I have to go to a workout tonight but um, I don't know you can watch me make some progress let me show you where I'm at and then I'll get back to painting so I made a sketch of this in my sketchbook originally and then I cleaned it up on my iPad and then I did this color rough and I liked it but it actually felt a little bit boring. It feels okay. Um, so that was my basis. And then I have, as you can see, I've already made some big changes to the palette as I have started painting. I really like, ooh, this background over here. That has turned out really well. That's like the only part that's done also. But uh, it's going well. So I guess I got all these supplies out. I've got a lot going on. So I guess I'm just going to get back to painting and you can join me. Even though this painting is very low stakes and it has no, it's just for practice, um, it feels high stakes because I like how it's going so far and I want it to keep going well. And it feels like every decision I make um, has the chance to make it a lot better or to ruin it, which I guess is true for every piece, but I just, yeah, it feels high stakes right now. Um, like when I started drawing all those bricks, I was like, oh, this is gonna be awful, I ruined it. But then I was like, oh, actually, this is gorgeous. I love it, it's a great addition of texture. So that's where I'm at right now. The tree, I think, is gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do that without you. But I promise I'll show you this painting when it's done. And thanks for dropping in on this little work session. Hey, what's up? 
It's Monday, and Moose and I are just hanging out here on the floor, and it's an exciting day because my first package from Blick just arrived, and I'm hoping that it has all my glazes in it. Um, if it does, then it might be the last package for a while, but I'm going to unpack it, and I thought that you might want to join me while I do that, and I think it might be fun. You can see all the colors that I got while I'm setting everything up. So let's, let's do it. Okay, so this is the package I have today. Um, I already got my clay. It came basically overnight, but I got two kinds. So this is a low fire white clay, and this is a high fire stoneware with some speckles in it. Um, I'm gonna be using them for kind of two different purposes, um, which I'm gonna explain at a later time. Uh, but I already have a lot of supplies from when I was doing ceramics in communal spaces. So these are all underglazes that I have. Um, some of them are full, some of them are empty, and I kind of need to do a um, like an evaluation of which ones of these I need to refresh and if I need to get any more colors. Um, these tools I already have for the wheel. This is a clear that I got when the glazes or, or when the, the clay first arrived. Um, the underglazes are for use um, early on in the process, and it's more like paint. It's used for more like illustrating kinds of designs. Um, but then all of these glazes are going to be more traditional glazes that I'm going to use in fun combinations to decorate my pottery in unknown, surprising ways. So let's take them out and do it. Um, this is Mako's, is the only branded Mako I got. It's got this really cool purple, red, blue speckle uh, on a base white. I got three different celadons, and celadons are kind of great for laying on top of other glazes. They do really interesting effects and they run a lot. So you have to be careful with them, but they're really beautiful. So I have three of those. Cherry Blossom. That is my third celadon, it's Jade. And this is a more of an under layer, uh, smoky Merlot. Then Arctic Blue, another under Potter's Choice. And finally I have two just basics. So this is just a clear high fire and this is just a white high fire. Hey, what's up? It is Saturday. I'm at Blick. I come to Blick at least a couple times a month because I'm always looking for supplies. I'm always hearing about new supplies and I like testing them out, getting some new colors, that sort of thing. I hope you can't hear that leaf blower out there. But I don't know. I just thought I would bring you with me a little bit into Blick because I love that store and I just love buying art supplies. So yeah, I'm about to go in and I'm going to stop talking to myself in this car. Hey, what's up? It is May. It is a gorgeous day and I am jumping back into my natural dyeing series. So if you follow my newsletter and my blog, you'll know that I've been doing natural fabric dyes for the past five or six months using different natural ingredients. Um, so I did lavender with blueberries, I did pink with avocados, I did yellow with turmeric, and then I 
turned. So these are kind of fabric samples from the dye, and then I turned the fabric into these homemade scrunchies. Very fun. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of my colors are fading. So before you dye, you use something called a mordant that makes your color stick around and stay permanently. Um, and I did use a mordant with all of these, but I think it wasn't a strong enough mordant. I tried different things for each one, and I guess I'm just finding that none of them are really satisfactory. So this time I'm going to be using alum, which is kind of the most well-known mordant, but it's a little bit harder to get a hold of, so that's why I haven't used it yet. Um, but I'm hoping in my next shop update I'm going to make like a rainbow pack of naturally dyed scrunchies so it'll have a purple, a blue, a pink, a yellow, um, just all together in one pack and it's just going to be so earthy and beautiful and I want to make sure that the colors in that pack are really going to stay so that's why I'm going to use the alum today and make sure it works. Um, I'm also going to be dyeing with a new ingredient, red cabbage. Uh, please look at how absolutely gorgeous this looks in the sunlight. Um, I never buy red cabbage because I don't eat it normally, but getting to buy this at the grocery store is just a treat because look how bright and beautiful it is. Um, and you can also get a variety of colors with red cabbage, so I'm going to be dyeing purple, blue, and teal today, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, if you want exact ratios, measurements, processes, all of that, and, and, you, and if you want to know how to dye with these colors that I've already done, I document that on my blog, so I'll link that below and you can go follow those steps if you want to. But I think this is going to be a really fun part of the video to show you guys. So I'm going to cut up my fabric. I have some leftover fabric from these experiments and then I'm going to start mordanting. Let's do it. Alright, so now we have this gorgeous cabbage cut up and we're going to start multitasking. So we're going to mordant the fabric and at the same time we're going to make the dye. So we've got this water ready. I'm going to mix the alum in till it dissolves and then in a separate large pot I'm going to start simmering all of this cabbage. Alright, so these have now been simmering for about 45 minutes. My apartment smells like cabbage, which is actually not the greatest smell. But you can see that like the color is really just leaching out of the cabbage. Um, it's funny that even it's turning a little bit green and white. Uh, and the water is taking on this nice purple color. That's going to be the dye. So this is going to probably sit and simmer for, I don't know, maybe an entire another hour. I'm thinking about doing two hours to truly get all the color and see how things change. Okay, so we're going to make a few colors. We've got the original purple, and if I add baking soda to one of these batches, I'm going to get a blue dye, and if I add even more, I'm going to get a teal dye because we are changing the pH of the dye. 
So first, I just want to have a blue dye. So I'm going to add, ooh, that actually went very teal already. And for here, let's bring you in closer. All right, so when I added the baking soda, it immediately turned into this green color, and I wish I would have got that on camera. But you can see here when I added the vinegar, it turned into more of a magenta color, a little more subtly, but still pretty nice. Let's add in some more test strips. You can see the color more there. So we've got purple, we've got this tealy green, and we've got magenta. And I'm gonna work on getting some blue. All right, here's a fun fact. This is getting a little bit janky, but I don't even care because these are experiments and that's what they're for. I only have three pots. I have one really big pot, but that's not gonna work. So I'm using this little saucepan as my fourth pot. And it's a little janky, but you know what? I really, like I said, that's fine. And I'm going to add just a smidge of baking soda so you can see this transformation. I feel like I'm like mixing up a potion in my cauldron. This is pretty fun. If you like this kind of thing, I totally recommend you experiment with this dye. So I'm hoping that's more blue and less green. It still looks a little green, but it's less green than the other. Let's throw in the last test sheets and we're going to let them sit. Alright, so all my final strips are soaking and I have learned a lot through these experiments. This was not the perfect process, it wasn't supposed to be, but I've learned a lot. I think it's pretty cool that I can make four very distinct colors from one ingredient, which I've never done before. Um, I did not make enough dye to divide up into four colors, which is a big lesson for next time. I also think I let the cabbage boil for too long in the beginning. I don't think I needed to boil for as long as it did. I'm going to wash out all the colors really soon, and that's the most fun part. So I will see you over there. So these are the colors after a basic rinse. They still need to rinse a little bit more, but it's nice to see them. They're very pastel because I didn't have enough dye to be able to let them sit for a long time. So that was an L. But like I said, this is an experiment and actually I might re-dye right on top of these. That's also the reason the colors are kind of splotchy because I didn't have enough dye for them to sit evenly um, in the pot with the dye. So, yeah, I mean, I'm still pretty excited about these colors. I want to see how dark I can make them. So when I do this again, I am most likely going to re-dye over top of some of these. But huge progress. So many colors from one ingredient. Here are the little test squares. I love the test squares. I think they're so cute. I love seeing this. A crazy development, uh, I turned my shower on to rinse these further and I didn't really think about how my shower had hot water because that's just where it's normally set. So these were just running under hot water for about five minutes and now they're all blue. So this is crazy. This experiment has reached a completely new level. I now have all these shades of blue. 
They look kind of purple in the video, but they're more teal in real life. And that's crazy. Me and this blue, we have learned so much today. I guess you've learned so much with us. And I will keep trying. All right, hey guys, so today I started making some test tiles for my pottery glazes just to test them all out. My pottery wheel is back ordered. I don't know if I've already mentioned that. So I can't start throwing yet. And so I want everything to be ready by the time it gets here, which means testing out all my glazes so I know how they look. Um, I'm making kind of untraditional little tiles just because I want to use as little clay as possible and just get a small test of each one. I don't want it to be super extensive. Um, so really I'm just hand building these tiny little tiles and then I'm gonna bisque them and then I'll, I already wrote out all the combinations of my glazes that I wanna try. So I'll just put them onto the little tiles, have a little sample of what each color looks like. Um, I don't know, it's not that interesting. It, Weirdly enough, I was feeling really nervous about touching this clay. I think because setting up this pottery studio is such a big investment, both like time-wise and money-wise, that I don't want to mess it up and I feel nervous about every step, like I'm going to do something wrong. So it was kind of a big hurdle for me to actually just get out this clay and start touching it and working with it. So I'm glad I did it and I will be glad to have it done. Um, it's the first step, you know, so I'm trying to just be positive, let it work. Hi, back again at the end of the video, just like I said. Uh, did you like it? Did you have fun? I hope you did. If you did, please like and subscribe this video. And if you have any questions or you want to see something specific, leave me a comment below. And I just want to say thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.